Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over how to play League of Legends uh, DFS, um, both in general and using the true DFS tools. I'm not going to get into all the in-depth ins and outs of, of how League of Legends, the sport works. Um, that could be for another time. We're just going to really focus on just how to play, how to sweat, and how to use the tools available to you um, on true DFS to help build lineups. Now, the first thing I will say about League of Legends, it's really important, I guess, to start with this, is if you're going to play, you have to realize that this is a time slot, which is not conducive to, to normal life of people that live in normal places. Okay, um, You'll see that th these games and these matches start at about 3 o'clock in the morning Eastern time, sometimes 5 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. So you got to keep that in mind if you want to do this. Now, the good thing about this is that it's very rare that you'll get late lineup changes that will punish you for putting your lineups in too early. In most sports, if you put in your lineups like five hours before the slate locks, it's just basically throwing money in the trash can because of all the substitutes that happen. It is very rare that you're going to substitute in a League of Legends slate. Now, it will happen sometimes. So if I were going to be, if I were going to give you actually good advice, I would say to try to be up, you know, right up until lock because you never know. Now, I am not going to be up until 2.45 in the morning to watch for these late lineup changes. Um, and I don't imagine everybody does. Uh, it's a... Uh, um, but listen, if you, if I'm going to give you the correct advice, the correct advice is to be up until the last possible moment. But, uh, the good news is if you're not, it doesn't punish you all that often. The other thing to note is that it is not a late swap sport, meaning that once the first match goes off at three in the morning or whenever that is, um, then all the lineups lock. Okay. Um, so that's the first thing is that it's, uh, again, depending on where you are and what you're looking to get out of this, uh, it's a very unique uh, time slot. I mean, some people just literally put their lineups in, go to sleep, wake up, see how they do, and they don't care. Some people, like, literally stay up and sweat all of these. What a lot of people from where, you know, my part of the country will do is you'll put your lineups in, and then when you get up, you, it's usually right around the time that these slates are kind of, like, reaching their last couple of matches. So maybe if you're live, you'll, like, sweat the last couple or something like that. Um but it's a, it's a, listen, it's a, it's, it's really an interesting sport to sweat. It's an interesting one to play from DF, uh, DFS perspective. And I'll tell you that I had never even heard of it <laughs> before I started playing it. Uh, and it's, uh, it, it really is a lot of fun. So I guess that is the first thing I should stress is that, uh, once again, is that, um, is that, uh, it is a very, very late night sport. Now, the, the slate we're looking at right now is five games, uh, five matches, and usually it's somewhere between two and five matches. And depending on whether you're in the playoffs or not, depends on how many games these play, these teams play against one another. Um, most of the time, these guys play two out of three, like best two out of three. And each game usually takes about a half an hour. Um, so each of these matches is going to get usually take about – somewhere between an hour, hour and a half or so, sometimes go a little bit longer. And the cool thing is, is that, uh, is that between each league, one waits for the other one before it starts. In other words, um, within these slates, there's kind of two leagues. There's the LPL and the LCK usually. Sometimes you'll see LEC, LCS or whatever. But the thing is, is that, if you have like two or three matches that are in the LPL, for example, one will usually wait for the other one to finish before the other one goes. So you, you're never really, it's very rare you're sweating more than, you know, two of these matches at the same time, which again is, I think is kind of cool. Um, um, so again, usually it's best two out of three, but when it gets in the playoffs, sometimes it's three out of five. And then sometimes when you do the LEC slates uh, or the LCS slates, those are usually best of one. No, just one game slates or one game, one match slates between these two, between these, uh, between these opponents. Um, 
So again, it, it's, it's all very, very interesting. It's, it's all very different depending on when you play. Now, these LPL, LCA case uh, slates, as I mentioned, are usually late, late at night. When you play the LEC slates, those are based out of Europe. So those are usually going to go at about noon Eastern time. And when you play the LCS slates, which is usually on the weekends, those are usually about 5, 6 p.m. Eastern time. So depending on what, you know, what type of action you want, there's, there's plenty, there is, uh, there is definitely uh, plenty to choose from. Okay. Um, okay. So you have these matches, you have these games. Like, how do you go about, about doing this? Well, you could certainly just kind of try to build these things by hand, but we're just going to skip right to um, how to build lineups using the tools available. Now, the first thing I will note is that um, we're now looking at the True DFS uh, site. Every so often, there is actually a video that we put out on our YouTube channel where our expert DFS Chan goes over the slate. And if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll get notified when those come, you know, when those populate. Um, or you could just check back to our Discord channel or right on the True DFS site where um, uh, where it will show the most recent ones. And what you'll see is DFS Chan will just be going over, you know, uh, who he likes on the slate. We don't do that every day, but every once in a while we will put something like that out. The other thing that you want to look at um, is this. Um, is uh, the esports projections, which are up here on True DFS, and and those usually get published. Um, yeah, I, listen, usually before I go to bed. So it's it, 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 you're going to see those probably before midnight at some point, um, and you're not going to probably see any updates after that. So if there is a substitute after midnight, you're just not going to see it from me. So you're going to have to kind of make a manual adjustment um, as far as that's concerned. Um, so the first thing you'll see is you'll, you, you'll go here and you'll see like all of these projections. Okay. Um, and this could be pretty daunting, but you got to just think of it this way with league of legends, DFS, it is just really about getting the teams, right? Like the winners, right? I mean, these, all these players correlate so well together that if you get the team, right, that's going to win, uh, you usually are in pretty decent shape <laughs> uh, with respect to which guys you pick. Now, look, I mean, there, there are subtleties where one guy's, you know, uh, correlate a little better with the other on your team. But usually if you could just jam in four guys from one team that wins and wins by a lot uh, and three, three guys from another team uh, that wins by a lot, you're in pretty good shape. Okay. So one thing that I put up here in addition to the projections is this stacks page where it basically ranks the stacks by various metrics. So you can look at it by raw points. You can look at it by um, modified stack scores. And we're not going to get too into that, but if we just look at it by raw stack, this is usually who the most, you know, most teams most likely to score the most points are. And that in this particular slate would be BLG and, and LNG, for example. Now, sometimes uh, DraftKings is smart and they will make it so that you can't stack, you know, BLG and LNG together because of the way salary works. And that's why you need kind of a lineup builder to help you, you know, uh, you know, uh, combine your, your desire to, to play the guys you're going to score the most with the reality that, uh, <laughs> that you're not going to be able to afford them all the time. Um, so the first thing you do, you can look at these projections, you look at these stacks but the real key is kind of building lineups, right? So, so, so you can use whatever optimizer you want to build lineups, but I do recommend that you use uh, the op an optimizer. And what I like to use is SaberSim. Now you could either, if things was, were working properly, you could get to these projections from the TrueDFS site if you had a SaberSim uh, subscription. You know, right from here, like, for example, if I, I, we're a little buggy right now, but if this were working, you would see all of the projections from uh, the projection piece filter into uh, 
filter in here. We don't. We have yesterday's in here right now. But um, uh, by tomorrow, hopefully we'll have tomorrow's. Um, so regardless, what you want to do is you want to you, you want to update the projections with, say, the true DFS projections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in to my own kind of sub, not subscription, to my own um, uh, iteration of SaberSim, which is not held on true DFS, just to kind of show you what you can what you can do and what you should what you're supposed to do. So here, what I would what I'll do is I'll get to the right date here. July 12th and well, it's already up here, but I'll do it again just to show you. We up, we, what you do is you upload your projections and replace whatever was there. So I can keep my own file, but you could do this usually right from the, right from the, uh, the true DFS site. And I'll show you that in a second. Like if you go back to here, I'll go back here. Like if you go back to True DFS and go to eSports projections again, hopefully you'll see. Hang on. Like this export button, CSV, where you do this, then it will provide this kind of spreadsheet file I'll show you on the, over here that you could then upload to Saberson, which I've done right here. So then what we do is we build some lineups. So let's build, say, um, uh, which we'll call it 30 lineups. We don't have any. Uh, oh, we didn't, we didn't do it right. Hold on. Upload. Boom. Boom. Screw it up just a little bit. Um, oh, so I didn't reset it. Sorry about this. There's only rule number one is make sure you always test your test your um, your technology before you before you do an example. Um, that should be good. All right, so let's build say thirty lineups, and I'm going to use the Saber Sim, just the regular, you know, uh, the defaults here, and we're going to build thirty lineups, and you'll see what usually ends up happening is they usually give you mostly four threes, meaning four of one team, three of another. And because the way League of Legends scoring works, just as I mentioned, everything, all these guys correlate really well with one another. Um, so you'll see most of the time you'll get four threes. Let's just see. Mm. Stack types, yeah, so they're all four threes. Um, and th that's really what you do. And then you could either, you could tweak a little bit from here if you want, or you just download these lineups and just like rock the house. Now you can just check and see that the majority of these are BLG lineups, then Ninja in Pajamas, and these are actual real names. Uh, and then if you want, you could, you could limit the amount of, of captain positions for some of the non-traditional captain spots. So usually, for example, the support position is not usually the best for the captain. So if you want, you could just X out all the supports, you know, and sometimes the top position also is one that's not usually, you know, a great captain position. So you could, you could tweak here. And if you did this, then you'd end up with, you know, more ninja pajamas, whatever. And then what you just do is you download these lineups and you upload them into, into DraftKings with that file and then you just kind of enter. And then you're off to the races. Um, the one thing I would um, add to uh, to this is is the sweat, okay? Like, how do you root for this stuff? Because when you, when you go on to, uh, if you just look at the DraftKings app, it's very, very slow to update everything. And you want to kind of see. So these are the two sites that I like. So so basically, first of all, just the regular Twitch channel. You go to twitch.lpl or, you know, some of the LOL sites. This is LPL, but um, there's also one for LCS, uh, LEC. You'll see them all here within, like, League of Legends Twitch. Twitch is really good. They give you the live streams of the games. Um, 
and with pretty good commentary. Uh, so that's one thing you can do. Another thing is if you just want to like check out the scores, there are two sites that I like. One is this, you could just, just copy this 1337pro.com. This actually keeps up with, you know, uh, not only the scores, but who's, what everybody's doing as far as kills, deaths, and assists. DraftKings doesn't really update it all that, all that well. So it's good to sweat this way. And the other one is this one, the Sofa Score. Sofa Score is another site that, that does this for you. Um, the other thing I would note is that we our Discord channel, uh, sometimes we put the, um, the starters out. And that is kind of important. Um, but th those usually should be within the projections as well. And... Uh, that's pretty much it. You know, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. And I really think it's still plus EV to play. Um, you see a lot of people doing some stupid stuff in your lineup in their lineup. So I think you can get a pretty good edge playing it and it's just something different, you know, and, and, and from, from an intellectual perspective, I think it's incredibly interesting just because of the way the correlation works. But even if you're just a fan, or even if you're just not even a fan, you just want something to sweat, it's pretty cool. I mean, all I should say is just don't knock until you try it because you do really, really get into it. And I think part of it, honestly, is, is how excited the announcers get when they get going because they really, really get in there. You know, and just listen, try it. Uh, uh, I, I think you will enjoy it. And uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.